Hello, everybody. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another staple video of the channel. I feel like this is going to be something I'm linking people quite a bit, where I'm going to explain my rating system, because even though it seems rather straightforward, it seems to be causing some confusion. So this has become especially relevant to me because of a conversation I had with another content creator, Tim, over at Hello Future Me. He's a wonderful guy, great channel, highly recommend you check him out. So we were talking about my recent review of To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, where he said it seemed like I was being pretty negative and I was confused. I went, everything was above average to really good. Why are you saying this seems negative? And he pointed out, well, 6.5 is generally considered bad. And that led into a conversation that I think I need to have with my audience as well, because I've seen in comment sections, people seeing me give like a seven out of 10 and saying, oh, that's bad. That's not worth reading. New, 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 new. I get why a lot of people view a five out of 10 as bad bad, especially because the schooling system in the United States shows a 50% as failing. And for things like tests, yeah, that makes sense. If you're trying to take a test, a 50% does not show a knowledgeable understanding of whatever you're being tested on. But this isn't a test. This is a review. I'm not testing books. I'm reviewing them. And now I don't want my review scale to be really limited by the idea that a five out of 10 is already bad to failing. That's just not how this is going to work. In fact, my scale of one to 10, I've actually said this before and I wanna make this absolutely clear and stated here, a five out of 10 is average and not failing. Think of a five out of 10, like a freezer burrito, right? It's okay. Like no one's not, you're not a horrible person for eating a freezer burrito. You have them in your freezer for like nights where you just can't, you can't cook. You prefer to cook. You prefer like a good meal, but it's not a failure. It's not like you're just spraying cheese whiz in your mouth for dinner. So yeah, five out of 10 quality freezer burrito. And I'm viewing a six to 6.5 as okay to good, a seven to 7.5 as I could see this being considered really good. That was technically well achieved. I appreciate all that was done here. Once you're entering the eight to 8.5, that is the great territory. That is the, this will be some people's favorites. Absolutely. I can see how the author is just really doing an outstanding job. Nine is a borderline masterpiece with few issues to be found and a 10 out of 10 is something that, okay, this is going to be considered one of the greats. This is something that is just absolutely mind-blowingly next level. So that's how I view a five. And then going down from there, we have a four out of 10, below average. I did not find this rewarding to read. It's not exactly my cup of tea. A three out of 10 would be, this has some severe technical failures and is just not achieving what the author wanted to at all. A two out of 10 is very few redeeming qualities, period. I don't think anyone could really enjoy this. It's just a failure. And a one out of 10 is just across the board, disappointment, nothing here to be enjoyed. It's a failure. And then a zero out of 10, which I didn't think I'd ever give out, but recently I had to, uh, is this is sinking to a new low I didn't know could be possible. So that's my scale and I'm not going to change it. I know there are a lot of people who seem to be frustrated by this. I've actually had some like pretty severe and passionate like pushback against this idea. I think it's because especially the school system in America has really drilled into people's heads that a five out of 10 is awful, it's horrible. But let me just put this out there. If for the scale of a review, a five out of 10 is horrible, what the hell is a one for you? If a five out of 10 is horrible, I'm imagining a one is like a piece of media that somehow came into your home and shot your family. Who, who are you? I'm a one out of 10. Oh my God! Like that's just not a realistic scale because it's limiting. A one to 10 scale where you're already saying five is horrible is really not a one out of 10 scale because you're not gonna be giving out lower than a five. You're gonna be giving out a five for things that are failures. and that's pointless. I specifically chose a one to 10 scale so I could have more options. I found a five scale to be far too limiting to possibly serve the purposes I wanted to. I need more than five points of separation between Cursed Child and Lord of the Rings to represent my disdain and appraise for one over the other. Or wow, well, oh, I did the wrong hands, one over the other. <laughs> In fact, if we're being honest, 
I need more than 10 points of separation. That's why I have the 0.5 in here all the way. And you'll often see people with the five star review cheat that system by putting half stars. Not really cheat the system. There should be half stars because it's ludicrous the idea that there should only be five possible scores. It's kind of ludicrous to me that only be 10. I fill out the in-between and expand because media is across a very wide and wonderful spectrum of quality and there's just no way you can encapsulate that in a scale of one to five or one to 10. I even still struggle with my scale, which has a greater range. So yes, I completely understand why a five out of 10 generally in a lot of people's minds a failure because they're viewing it in the academic sense. That's great. This is not that setting. This is a setting of quality and I'm putting my bell curve with the dead middle of average being right down there. But that immediately raises the question, Daniel, why do we see more six, sevens, and eights from you than we ever do two, threes, and fours? If you're reviewing all this stuff, then your bell curve should line up with the average. Well, that's because my bell curve's being skewed, very happily so. I'm happy to say I don't have to sift through everything to try and find some better pieces of media. I'm being recommended things by my audience. Fortunately for myself, my audience doesn't feel the need to recommend me bad things. So the inherent nature of that relationship pushes up my bell curve a little bit into the more positive. And I, you know, maybe I should be reviewing the full spectrum of media, but I tried to do that and it resulted in me reading Fifth Sorceress, which like damaged me as a human being for a while. So I'm going to just keep listening to the recommendations from my audience. I've seen some people very vocally on every video being like, hey, read Chronicles of Amber. So that is going to be bumped up now because yes, my audience is very much so pushing for that. I have other things I need to get to first, but it's going to happen. I'm going to be linking this video to people for a long time and I'm not gonna get to Chronicles of Ember for a long time, so this is gonna age poorly, because I just said I'll get to it soon, and uh, it's probably not gonna be that soon. So, yeah, that's the conclusion of this video. I hope you can understand my review system, and it's certainly not meant as like a shot or a problem with anyone who does embrace the five-star system or anything like that. I get it, everyone has their preferences, this is my preference. And I really would struggle, I feel, to use another system that kind of just only has such a constricted amount of options to choose from. I, I would feel I would be lumping in pieces of media that I feel are of different quality in one rating just because I, I don't think they're up to this other huge leap level or down to this very large step down level. So I like my system because it gives me more flexibility and I think represents how I feel about what I'm talking about better. But I understand some people like the more simplified just one to five system, that's a-okay. The only system I have a problem with are the people who think four stars is the most you can give out. What? Who? Who said? Who, no, no, no one to four system. Absolutely not. A lot of crazy people use a three star system. Okay. If that's your cup of tea, you go there. Then there's the five star system. I understand that one. I can appreciate that. Then there's the 10. People who say like, oh, my scale is like one to four or one to seven. You're, you, stop it. You're, no. No. But yeah, that's just me going over this because I wanted to clarify it because it seems to be something that some people are confused by. Anyway, like and subscribe if you have not already. Check out the Fictional Conversation podcast I have with my friend Bobby. Link in the description down below. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.